What's going on everyone, it's Rifle here, and thanks for checking out this Fallout 76 nuking experiment. Previously we tried to see if we could survive a nuke explosion inside the Pulaski's preservation shelter, and well we found out that you can't. I don't doubt that this was part of Pulaski's business scheme, I mean who is really going to notice that these didn't work after the bombs drop? I mean most people are going to be dead and not really worrying about whether Pulaski's preservation shelters worked or not, especially for the ones that did use these and died. I mean it's safe to say they didn't receive what they were truly looking for which was survival from using the Pulaski's preservation shelter. Whether they died from radiation, starvation, or the nuke explosion like me and my buddy did and for anyone else that tries to use these for protection at the moment from a nuke explosion in Fallout 76 now I'm not sure if this is going to be something they may add in the future as a feature to be protected from a nuke but at the moment it's safe to say you don't survive. Even if you're barely in the blast radius of the nuke you may live a little bit longer but you're still gonna die. So don't try running to these thinking you're gonna be safe and sound. They may be able to protect you from smaller explosions, but nukes, no. They're not gonna be able to save your life whatsoever. Anyways, in this video we're gonna be testing to see if it's worth it or not to nuke over at the Charleston area. When we do hit over here, the Charleston Capitol building will also be affected, and this area is loaded with enemies inside. Also, not sure if this has any significance, but one of the default loading screens is of the Capitol building, and as you can see, it looks as if it was nuked recently. You could tell by the green effect around in the loading screen. This may be some kind of hint from the developers to us to nuke this area. I'm not sure. I will say though, it definitely piques my curiosity to nuke this location even more. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Okay, so is the Charleston area worth it to nuke in Fallout 76? The answer is absolutely. This is the best nuke experiment that we have had so far on this series comparing to White Springs and the Fisher Sight Prime to fight the Scorch Beast Queen. This was highly recommended by the community and I can see why. The area has quite a bit of enemies around. And if you want glowing ones when you do nuke over here, you're going to have to keep popping servers until you see feral ghouls over at the Charleston area, as well as feral ghouls over at the Capitol building. This will give you the most bang for your buck when you do nuke over here. You're going to be getting a ton of experience. And the reason why I suggest to keep popping servers until you see feral ghouls around in the vicinity is because those will mutate into glowing ones when you do nuke here, which are way easier to maintain. First off, they are easier to see in a nuke zone. They also don't shoot at you like scorched or super mutants, which makes them a whole lot easier to take care of. And not to mention, they're gonna be giving you around the same amount of experience too. I will say the Capitol building is invested with enemies way more than any other area around in Charleston. You're not going to be finding nearly as many enemies as you will cooped up inside the Capitol building. Sheesh! I have not seen this many enemies in one location besides at White Springs and at the Fisher Sight Prime fighting the Scorch Beast Queen. Also I will mention try not to waste too much time trying to find feral ghouls over in the Charleston location just because you're not going to be finding as many there as you would inside Charleston's Capitol building. This place can be infested with glowing ones, not to mention legendary enemies too. Typically like two to three legendaries per time you refresh this area. Like check out this footage here. I believe I took out four different legendary enemies that were compiled together. You hardly ever see that many legendaries grouped together, I'm telling you. This place can be just as useful as White Springs for farming experience and loot. So if you feel like switching it up a bit, this is definitely a great area to try out. Don't just take my word for it, go ahead and try it out for yourself. And also I'm going to let some of this footage that I got at the Capitol building do some of the talking too, for proof of course. I'm not trying to waste your guys' time. My goal out of this series is to test locations so you all don't have to waste your time attempting at areas that could be possibly duds. And I will say that this area, specifically the Capitol building, is not a dud whatsoever. Okay. 
So yeah, as you just saw there, I got four different legendaries by one run. And I'm about to be showing you two farm runs that you can do at this area once you nuke it. As well as how to fight a unique named enemy that goes by J47. After I show you these glowing behemoths that I encountered, as you can see here. I randomly encountered all of these glowing behemoths one time when I nuked over at this location. As you can see, this is exactly where I nuked at. I'm not exactly sure how these got here. I'm sure this is just some kind of glitch that happened in the game because I have not been able to get these to respawn ever again. But I have to say it was pretty awesome and it would be cool of Bethesda to add this many behemoths in an actual fight. Like, could you imagine all of these chasing you around? It's terrifying! I don't know, I got extremely excited when I saw all these. I was like, wait, what? Did something special actually happen from nuking over here? But. No, it doesn't really seem the nuke triggered something special like this to happen. This was just completely random. I've never got this to happen again. And I tried nuking over here multiple different times after this happened. I have never seen this many behemoths, let alone glowing behemoths, in a group together. Once again, I have no idea what happened. I was just fighting some glowing ones inside the Capitol building, doing the farm run that I'm about to be showing you, except I died because things just got a little too out of control and when I respond there was these glowing behemoths outside of the Charleston Capitol building <laughs> I was so excited like I didn't want to just immediately kill them I wanted to get actual footage of all of these here and not to mention when they started chasing me I was trying to get cinematic footage of all of them here and let's just say uh, that failed but at least I got a picture I guess of them a pretty awful picture but hey I have never experienced this again so it's a keeper. Nonetheless, a really interesting experience. I got plenty of loot, and they gave me a whopping 595 experience each time I took one out. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of them. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into these farm runs that you can do when you do nuke over at this location. Alrighty, so I'm going to be starting at the area where you'll spawn at when you do fast travel over to the Charleston Capitol building. You just simply want to take the route that I'm taking, and this will lead you to the DMV, which is where we'll be starting these farm runs at. Once again, Scorched, Super Mutants, or Glowing Ones have a chance at being here when you nuke this location. As long as you nuked it when there is Feral Ghouls here, there should be Glowing Ones. But yeah, when you enter inside the DMV, this is where you can have two options. The first option is personally my favorite because it's the most convenient and fastest, which is you want to wait for your team to of course get inside the DMV with you. And then you just want to start taking out the enemies. There will be more and more that will start coming throughout the Capitol building over to this vicinity. And you and your team should be sharing experience and loot pretty well in this area because it is a pretty condensed location. Hopefully you don't have a teammate that's just taking out enemies in one hit. I gotta love those teammates because you're not going to be getting any loot or experience. They're going to be hogging it all. But yeah, as you can see, you should get swarmed with glowing ones at this location. And typically, like I said before, two to three legendaries Per run. Now, just to be sure, when you do take out all the glowing ones that come to this area, you can check throughout the Capitol building to see if there's any more left. But yeah, that is one farm run that you can do. You know, of course, once you've taken out all of the glowing ones inside the area, you just simply want to quit all the way out of Fallout 76. And also make sure you and everyone else is outside of the Capitol building when you are resetting or it's going to be trickier for the enemies to actually reset. Which, in case you don't know how to do that, for example, on Xbox One, you just pull up the dashboard, and then you just go down to FOSS 76, you press start on that, and then you choose quit. And as long as you're on a team, you should be able to join right back into your server. Keep in mind, you're going to have to be on a team to be able to get this to work. But yeah, when you rejoin, you should spawn exactly at that location that we started the farm run at. And you just want to rinse and repeat by going back into the DMV. Because that's where you're going to be getting the most amount of enemies. 
Another run that you can do at this location to make sure you get all of the enemies is just simply run through the Capitol building and eventually when you get into this corridor and keep straight, you're going to see that the floor has collapsed and you can take this up to this double doored room. Here is where you can bottleneck enemies inside. It's a great area to just tunnel all the enemies to you so you and your teammates can share the experience. The enemies should have respawned inside the building as long as no players were inside there when you were resetting. If none of the enemies did refresh, just simply try again. Sooner or later, this will work. And I have to say, you do get quite a lot of experience and loot. And keep in mind, not every time you come into this building, you're going to find legendary enemies. Sometimes you won't, that happens. But when you refresh the enemies, you'll have a chance again for the legendary enemies to spawn. So just because they don't spawn one time doesn't mean they're not going to spawn another time. Also, there is a Grafton monster right outside of the Capitol building, as well as a Snallygaster if you're interested in taking out those enemies too. As for Charleston itself, there were a few enemies here and there, but it seems like the majority of the enemies are going to be at and around Charleston's Capitol building. Okay, so how you spawn in the unique named enemy J47, you just simply want to go up to this terminal inside the building and then choose the option to boot up Department C. Actually, both options will spawn in more enemies. But yeah, when you boot that up, you'll get some dialogue over a telecom. J47, calling J47. So yeah, it seems J47 responds and actually comes to the DMV room. Thought that was pretty interesting and wanted to just add it into this nuking experiment. Which, speaking of, if you are in search of flux, there is another way that you can nuke this area. I actually chose to nuke over at Summersville Dam. I didn't hit Charleston because I knew the Capitol building was already filled with enemies and I can just keep refreshing those. But if you hit the Summersville Dam, you'll also be hitting the Capitol building. You just won't be affecting Charleston, which, once again, didn't really have too, too much enemies in the first place. The majority of them were coming from the Capitol building. If you do choose to hit Summersville Dam, you'll also be hitting Riverside Manor, and over toward there is loaded with nuked flora, specifically fluorescent, yellow cake, and cobalt. I didn't find too much cobalt compared to fluorescent and yellow cake. If you're in search of flux, this is another way that you can nuke this area so you can get nuked flora as well, because if you directly just hit Charleston, you're not going to be getting that much nuked flora. I'll be completely honest, didn't have that much around. But if you nuke over toward Riverside Manor, <clears throat> you're going to find tons around the location, as well as tons heading toward the location too in the woods. Just be checking all around on the ground next to trees, next to bushes, and you're going to come across quite a bit. As you can see, here's how much I got, and I wasn't searching around that that long. Maybe like 10-15 minutes. But yeah, that's right wrapping up this video, everybody. Hopefully you found this enjoyable and you learned something new out of this Fallout 76 nuking experiment. If you did, it would be greatly appreciated if you could take a little bit of your time and leave a like. And hey, maybe subscribe and stick around for more Fallout 76 content like this in the future. But as always, that is totally up to you on whether or not you want to support this series. I'm out of here, though. Thanks for taking the time to watch and listen. Until next time, peace.